Yeah, I mean, as Supergirl, there was a lot of wire work, uh, green screen and all of that. That was my first foray into that, and I've done a lot of it since with Bitten. V was an entirely green screen show. We had no props, mm -hmm. nothing. Yeah, it was just tape. And the big so thing it about, prepared me for that, I guess. Yeah, the big thing about green screen, too, is it's just so much of it you have to create in your own mind and it's shocking because yeah. you, you go in there and you, it, depending on how you work, like, I need to know technically how it is being seen, how big something is, is really important, you don't want to overreact to something, <laughs> and then have them in post make it really small and you're like, wow, I'm really scared of this, but it's super friendly looking. Like, you, really, you have to have a team that works with you in that, but, but it's, it also teaches you how much you can depend on what they do technically and you don't have to be so nervous. Like when I first came on the show, I'd be so nervous. I'm like, what, what do you want me to do? And I have to jump off this. And how is that even going to look cool? Your mother's <laughs> death or whatever it may be. And it's just a great, like, basically Wilson. <laughs> 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 I mean, working on things. So <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, it sharpens your skills, I guess. It really forces you to bring that game when you have so limited things to interact with. Um, is there also sort of this kinship, uh, especially amongst women, like? this kinship working in, in genre because you guys can kind of trade notes and have sort of uh, you know in, inside language about this world that maybe other actors out there don't necessarily have or you know. like having to wear outfits you can't move in? <laughs> I, I guess that would be part of it, yeah, like you know what, what goes on. Yes. <laughs> I mean, for the seasons I was on the show, I was in like short jean shorts yeah. and a crop top trying to do stunts. So as a woman, yeah, you've got to find a way around that, but also try to voice you know, your opinion about maybe changing things up to make it more comfortable for yourself and for what you're doing. Which I, I think back when we were doing the show, or especially myself, I was scared to voice my opinion. Now I'm not, if, if it's right for me and it makes me comfortable, it's important. But I think back then I just wanted to please everybody. Yeah, I, I had a similar experience too, but Smallville was where I learned to find a voice. Mm -hmm. um, and it was hard, but it took a long time and it wasn't easy. And I used to try and take calls with producers and I would only do it on the phone because every time I voiced my opinion about something when I was 19 or 20, I'd just start crying. And I felt so alone in that experience. Um, so it was, it was so hard to gain that voice. And now that I have it, it's so empowering and easier to support other women that I work with, young, younger women especially, who are coming in and who are very tentative and scared and feel like they're replaceable, just to tell them that they really aren't and that they can say no or find alternative solutions to things and that doesn't make them a problem um, and makes them strong. It's not just finding your voice, it's, it's helping other people find their voice and, and hopefully affecting uh, the overall industry. So now when you step onto the set of Supergirl, do you find that uh, that, that impact has been felt? Like uh, that it is an easier time for actors and specifically for female actors on set? One of the things I noticed, and again, I'm, it sounds like I'm speaking to the surface level, but it's, it's, it's not, but it's what you see right away. So um, I think it was Ginger Rogers that says, we do everything a man does except backwards and in heels. And we still have to go out and do that. And I remember being on, on Smallville and we'd be running away from zombies, running up hills, running outside. I'm wearing four inch heels and a, a, a spaghetti dress, and, and God bless Tom, he's got his hiker boots and five layers of clothes on. And I'm like, I'm glad you're warm, and I'm freezing, and I, you know, there's all these other things that you have to continually keep doing, and I'm not complaining, it's just a fact of the way it, yeah. it is. And then when I went out to Supergirl, what was very interesting is Melissa here is playing Supergirl, she was wearing flat boots, I hadn't seen that and all the different things, she's like, I am not gonna do any of those things and anything I can't move properly in. And so it, it sounds like it's inconsequential, but it's not. It's a huge change from when we started. <laughs> when we started, and even, even what her outfit is and what she's wearing and what she's representing and, and what they're focusing on. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah gone is like the, the, the short shorts and the, and the uh, crop top or whatever, yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, it just shows you how far we've come. Yeah. But the first thing I wanted to do was burn. My wardrobe as soon as Not the S, not the S. I never had the S. I didn't have, no, Erica. 
I watch it, I promise I watch it. That's good, because we're going to quiz you now on every single episode of the show. Both ones you were in, episodes you weren't in, yes. Uh, actually, that's, that's a good segue to an uh, audience question. Um, hi, right up front, what's your, what's your question? Hello. Hi. Hi. Um, well, first off, thank you to all of you guys for coming to Austin, you fans. Love you guys. And, like, and like, you guys are so nice and wonderful. And uh, I was going to say, like, earlier I told you that, you know, I showed you on, like, my head so much. And I showed Michael earlier, and I wasn't expecting the reaction because I thought you were going to be serious. But, but my honest question is, um, like, is it cool you uh, can teach me the Canadian National Anthem? <laughs> really? <laughs> I, I did not see that one coming. A lot of times I can predict where the question's going. You, sir, took that. Uh, I, Are there I, any other Canadians in the room? I'm not going to actually make them sing the anthem, but I'm willing to bet that they have a better grasp on the Canadian anthem than Americans have on, the, uh, on our national anthem, on, on average. I could be wrong, I don't know. But, uh, not gonna ask you to sing, but do you think you know? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was really trying to give you an out on this. We're so quiet. Oh man. Okay. Stand and didn't That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and you don't love our country. <laughs> I love the country. No, um, that was awesome. Okay, thank you. Yes. Thanks for giving me a surprising question today. That's, uh, that's good. Uh, no pressure, sir, but that was pretty good. Yeah. What's your question? Uh, thank you for coming. A uh, question to be for any of y'all. You know, now today they kind of actually mentioned earlier about the the, uh, everyone sharing their workout routines and diets and stuff. Y'all were shooting. I'm just curious to know, you know, all of you had some action sequences and fight scenes. Uh, did y'all, uh, I guess, have any training or what were your routines like? Yeah, any training routines or anything? <laughs> I mean, mine's really boring. I just worked out. That's all. It's <laughs> <laughs> <That was> exciting. <laughs> Good and important. I, I grew up doing martial arts, so I started when I was seven. So I have a second degree black belt when I started. She's my girl. Oh, real. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I enjoy a good fight. Um, <laughs> that sounds horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to do a lot of the stunts on that, and, and that came in hand in my martial arts background. Yeah. I did a lot of, well, I just did a lot of running. I did a lot of yoga, a lot of stretching. Um, and I worked up my aggression in a, like a kickboxing bag at home. And did you do a tie bow? <laughs> <laughs> no, I did it. Uh, okay. <laughs> so yeah, and then of course whenever we would work on the day, they would bring in people that knew how to do those things. That's the other thing that, you know, we're not always afforded the time. You know, you talk about people that say, oh, I'm going to decide to be a, a fighter, and they go off for a year and they study it, or they transplant themselves to another country. You don't have that when you're shooting a TV series. You've got, we're shooting this today. Here's the man or woman that knows how to do it, come over here, and you've got, like, you're getting mic'd at the same time, they're like, let's show you some fight moves, and you try to work it out as fast as you can, but we definitely relied on, on people that are incredibly talented and skilled, and then we worked with them. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah thank you. <laughs> hey. um, you guys played some iconic characters when you guys were playing your individual roles, and you guys did an amazing job. They stand as my favorite versions of those characters today, but... Given that when you guys step into those roles, the same uh, social media and YouTube uh, comic book shows critiques weren't what they are now, would you guys be more nervous about playing that iconic role today than you were in the first I actually think I'd be less nervous. I was thinking about this the other day. I remember when I was cast, and um, and it was a really big deal that I didn't have red hair. You know, it was a really, really big deal. And, I, and, I, and it wasn't even a question about being Asian, like we just pretended that I wasn't. That was just. <laughs> <laughs> but now I feel like you could change the character to be more representative of, a, you know, a non background, and it and it wouldn't be as I mean it would be a big deal in some some circles, but 
as a whole, have you something more accepted? And I, and I love that. I think that's pretty awesome. Although there is a lot of pressure. Yeah. Um, I find for myself, I do, I tend to live in a bit of a rabbit hole. Like I, I have a very small existence outside of me coming to, to work in, in these forums and so I, I don't really pay attention to a lot of the stuff that's going on even in social media I'm, I'm a little bit um, not great at it I'm learning You're <laughs> I'm getting better but I wasn't uh, Chris is the one that actually got me on social because I, I wouldn't do it the, you know all I mean? people I know, which is <laughs> highly ironic my point being even when I came on to do the show um, I really kind of blocked out like I didn't know how intense that was, you know, to be playing that character. And then I lucked out because I was playing a, a character in the, in the incarnation of her was earlier in her life. Although at the beginning I, I was in a lot of trouble for even being part of Clark's world. And the, and the world might have exploded had we seen each other, totally. that sort of thing. So that was really stressful um, at the beginning, but it also allowed her to be kind of find her way and be, be clumsy and it worked with the character and it worked with the storytelling. So my personality type, I do tend to um, avoid a lot of the stuff that even like, you know, we were talking about going to see a movie earlier and you're like, what did the, you know, you're telling me about all the critics and I'm like, oh, really? I really like that. So I kind of live a little bit in my own bubble. Um, I agree and I mean, I'm very similar to Eric and that I like to be in my own bubble. I also think it's great that, you know, so many things have changed uh, in this day and age, but I do think I would have felt more pressure had I been cast as Supergirl now with the social media forums, people hiding behind screens, making comments. That would be a really unhealthy environment for me to have been cast in my first American series and a superhero. So there was already pressure back in the day when none of this existed that I put on myself and we're great at putting pressures on ourselves. So to have had that in addition to it, I don't know if I could have handled it. So, you know, the, Melissa, all the superheroes, everything we have today, they're dealing with so much more pressure than we did, I think, absolutely, just publicly. Well, you know, because the show kind of straddled this, this line of before social media and then after social media, you know, uh, really kind of exploding in the 04, 05 time, did you notice, uh, and I guess Kristen, why don't you start with this, did you notice sort of like, was there a shift in the middle where it's like, oh, now, I mean, now you can't really be actors without, or do a whole lot of things in the media without having some social media footprints. Um, it's unnecessary it's, Yeah, it's like, was there a push to like, oh, now you guys gotta get on social, or oh, hey, you need to pay attention to this stuff now. You know what, I think I missed it entirely. I don't think I got any social media until after I left Smallville. Yeah. And, and I don't believe anyone else on the show did either. I we were still the show where we were, the people weren't allowed to have phones on set. You know, like to really? take pictures. Like when I was working there at the end of it, and we were trying to keep some, something under wraps, it was the obvious. Like it was, it was the opposite to what it is now. It was, don't let people in to see it create the hype by not having it. So anybody who was working on the set, any uh, background players that we had, anything, they weren't allowed to have their phones. So it was kind of a completely That's fascinating different. though, because that World. also means that it was established enough that enough people were carrying around, you know, around 2007, I guess, is when yeah. everybody started carrying around like smartphones, you know? Yeah, well now it's sort of expected yeah. as well. This is behind the scenes, videos, mm -hmm. well, the actors are posting. It's, yeah, it's good. You have to be more involved all the time. Yeah, it certainly wasn't like that. Um, Smallville was on. We, we kind of we just missed it. So with that, now when you work on television, is it feel like there's less of the ability to have an off switch since someone is always doing behind the scenes, or someone's already trying always trying to do an Instagram story on set, or there's this whole social media marketing team? Is there? Is it feel more like you're working all the time? Well, I'll just answer quickly because I'm the show I'm on right now is a, is a drama that doesn't have a ton of publicity <laughs> with, a, with a department that's not super savvy when it comes to social media. So we do like little things every once in a while, but it's very clear that that's what we're doing on that day, um, and so it doesn't overflow. But I imagine on because these guys work on you know really big shows, I imagine it's more present there. I I mean just as an example. I have a new show coming out on Netflix, and the publicity person called me to ask me to go into my Instagram 
and find out the demographic ratio of male versus female and what ages they are that follow me. Really? Yeah. Whereas you're and like, I would like to learn my lines. Yeah. <laughs> that's, I didn't even know you could do that. Now I'm aware of it and I see it and it's, it's, it's just another thing to think about, but that's how they're going to promote my character to those demographics. They're going to gear it to that. That's crazy. I wonder if, they'll, if they go another season, if they'll change the character. I wonder. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it's just a whole different, and they'll cast based on numbers. What I don't like about that either, either is, I mean, we all, you know, we all know that there's a, a sense of being a product, and that's okay. And, you know, you buy into that so that you get the opportunity to work because you love to create. So I'm not complaining at all. But what I find interesting is, in casting and many of all the, all those other things, they're now making decisions based on social media accounts that aren't based in reality. So so then what do you do? <laughs> you know. So you're going in like even last year there was a couple of scenarios where I was up against some people and we were you know and I thought that's not the truth. But their social media platform was so much better and so much more slick that it, it looked like a better, like the experience level wasn't as much, they hadn't done as much as I had, you know. And I'm not talking about, um, it's just weird. It's, it's weird. I mean, I know we, we already live in a world where you don't actually have to have a resume to get a big job, right? But that being said, um, <laughs> But it's the influencer in, influencer influence on the media, like you know, on jobs that yeah. people that have a big following, but not necessarily, not necessarily the talent to support it, yeah. get jobs. Yeah. It is a fact. Yes. Uh, sorry. Uh, really long answer. <laughs> that was my fault. I, I interjected, but you got you got all that. It was really good though. I like insight. I mean. Look, I enjoy the Rosenbaum panel, but it's nice actually asking questions. <laughs> 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 oh, I, I saved some time.